doing, and he would mark every time throughout the day that he said something bad about someone else, that he was greedy. Uh, and in an effort to help him be more mindful and be aware of when he was doing these things so that he could stop. So again, and as a psychologist, one of the things that we do is engage in cognitive behavioral therapy with patients. A big part of that is asking people to write things down to help them become more insightful about patterns and behaviors in their life. Uh, I'll ask patients to keep a mood journal. Tell me how you've been feeling over the past week. I do that so I know, one, if what I'm doing is helping, because if it's not, I need to do something else. But two, it helps the person stop and think, wow, I'm feeling really depressed. Why was I feeling depressed that day? And again, it's all about writing it down, keeping track. This is not new stuff, but the nice thing about quantified self and why it's really taken off is technology makes this data capture easier than ever before, right? Uh, I'm incredibly lazy, so that's why I have a wearable device. Because if you ask me to write down how many steps I took throughout the day, how many hours of I sleep at night, uh, I would not do that. But having a device that does it for me allows me access to that data so then I can still benefit from it. So let's talk really more about what, what what's at the heart of Quantify itself. So when we have our meetups, we usually have people present on topics and things that are of interest to them. And we ask them to answer three questions. What did you do? How did you do it? And what did you learn? So what did you, let, let's, let's look at each of these in, in sequence. What did you do? That's why we're all here today, to learn life hacks. That's the core of what you're trying to change. Uh, we just heard about a bunch of different life hacks for sleep, different things to do, different things to try. Um, what's something someone here is hoping to change from today? Anyone? I will pick. I was a teacher. I'm happy to call people out if need be. Anyone, anyone, anyone? Yes. Quality of sleep. All right, we're just going to keep on the sleep train. It's actually one of our more popular ones that, right, none of us get enough sleep. So quality of sleep. How do you think you could track your quality of sleep? Okay. So journaling. Somebody else. Anything anybody else is trying to change? Looking, hope, procrastination, uh, fear of talking to people. Anything? Fear of speaking in public. Um, yes. My weight. Okay. okay. How do you think you could track that? Cool. And how is that going? It's going good. I've lost a lot of weight so far. Good. Yeah. So, how have you? So, have you just been doing journaling? Spark people. Isn't that funny? Yes. Yeah. So that, no, no, that's great. Because that, thank you for the wonderful segue. Because that gets into how did you do it? <clears throat> and that's really what I want to impress upon you is whatever way you choose to do it, writing it down is important, important, important. You got to have the data because you, however you're going to capture it, whether it be a wearable, whether it be journaling uh, a website, whether you just old-fashioned pen and paper, it doesn't matter as long as you get the data. You can use technology if you're lazy like me. If you're a more dedicated person, write it down. Keep a, keep a log journal of it. <clears throat> so, you know, again, one of the nice things about technology, this basis band is tracking my steps, my sleep, my heart rate, my temperature, uh, how sweaty my skin is, all of that stuff, right? All of it in one little thing. So I have access to a lot of data that I can try and look at. Um, anybody here familiar with 23andMe? Okay, anybody done 23andMe? How, right? You get all kinds of data that you never would have known before. I, if you're not familiar, 23andMe is a wonderful site that will take your DNA and give you your genotype. Won't sequence your whole genome because we know you're human and we don't need to do all of that. But we want to figure out what's unique to you. So what it does, though, is give you access to data that you never would have had before. 
Uh, for example, I learned that I was a carrier for a rare kind of mutation. I don't have it, but I'm a carrier for it. Would never have known that. Never, nobody in my family has it. I, I was able to, with that data, gain some insight and say, wow, go back to my side of the family and say, you guys need to be aware of this, this kind of data tracking. So we come to the last point, and that, that brings me to the last part of quantified self. What did you learn? Right? It's not enough to collect this data. If you collect data on your sleep for the entire month and never look at it again until day 30, you're not going to be successful in changing your sleep habits. If you're writing down everything that you're tracking on your weight, if you're not regularly looking at how much you're taking in at, uh, and thinking about, wow, what happened that day? Why did I get so much more calories on that day? If you're not regularly doing that, you're not going to be successful in changing your behavior because really it comes down, if we're going to move from life hacks to life lessons, it really is all about feedback and generating that feedback loop. Our brains are wired for very short-term feedback. Evolutionarily speaking, we are designed for feedback along the lines of, I touch a hot stove and I jerk my hand back, <laughs> right? That's one of the reasons we have so much problem with things uh, like weight in this country. We're, not de we're, we're designed on a stove feedback loop, not a cake feedback loop, right? The cake feedback loop is, the cake I eat today is going to make me fat a whole lot later than what I can see right now. So because that feedback loop is so long, I don't change my behavior until much, much later. If we ate a slice of cake and it immediately made us swell and our clothes, our pants not fit right, you know, kind of like Thanksgiving dinner not fit right, <laughs> then we might change our behavior a lot more easily and we might, find, we might not have such a problem with weight. <clears throat> so for example, you know, things I've learned about myself in, in terms of diet is tracking my cheat days. I need to keep looking at that. Right? I can't have cheat days. That's what I learned. I can't do it. So I need to look at longer lifestyle changes. I need to figure out ways to incorporate those feedback loops into what I'm tracking and into what I'm doing. So what we're really talking about, and the reason I'm focusing so much on data is because you've heard a lot of the large platitudes and, and you know, the kind of the big ideas uh, about you know, what motivates you, reasons to do these things. Um, big ideas and so I'm really trying to impress upon you the importance of that data collection and the insight and looking at it periodically. You know, it, it's about, it's similar to the idea of symptom versus disease. If you have a cold, by all means take some DayQuil, right? If you are trying to track, you know, if if you're trying to improve your sleep, please go home tonight and try one of those life hacks. Try, you know, do something, you know, to immediately kind of ameliorate that. But if you keep getting colds, you probably should check into that. So if sleep is a chronic problem for you, not only should you do these life hacks, see how they're working, um, take, a take a moment to stop and reflect on why am I having such poor sleep? Why am I having trouble getting to bed? Am I stressed out at work? Is there something else going on that I need to pay attention to? So as a psychologist, that's, to me, that's what I really want to uh, bring to this is it's not just about kind of short-term life hacking to change a quick behavior. You can take that same data and think about it, reflect on it, to really provide a lasting change in behavior, to keep that going. And it's not even just about changing your behavior. It's you should reflect on your life hacks as well. You know, going back to that three, that three lessons, what are you doing? Is what you're doing working? Is, it, is what you're trying to change still meaningful for you? What are you learning? What should you change? You know, maybe not every life hack we've mentioned today is going to work for you. you. But how are you going to know unless you write that down, unless you reflect on it, unless you keep processing that information unless you keep that feedback cycle going. 
So really it's all about watching, reflecting over and over again. And this is again, the heart, the reason I'm so into this is this is a lot of what I do in therapy with people is having them, what happened? Let's go over that. Why do you think you did it a certain way? And if you don't take time to write these down or reflect on them, it's not gonna be as effective. All right, I'm keeping my eye on my time here, so. I wanna make sure, I, it's also terrible when you're going right before a break and you, everyone's had a long day and you know everyone's like, shut up, I just wanna to go to the bathroom. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, I was audience member too. Um, <laughs> so let's get, let's get right into it. Um, let's get to uh, my challenge for you. So over the next 30 days, I want you to reflect on why you're trying to change what you're changing. And I'm gonna give you kind of an easy medium and a hard way to do this. An easy way to do it is today, write down one theory about why you think you do what you do. Why do you think you get poor sleep? Why do you think you have trouble you know, with weight? Why? Just have a hypothesis. Because over the next 30 days, that's what you're gonna be testing. You're gonna be testing that hypothesis. You're gonna be reflecting on that. You're gonna be not only looking at interventions, but you're gonna be thinking about why is this, does this connect with my theory of why? So that's the easy thing to do. Just write down one thing. You wanna take it up a notch. I want you to make time every, make time to analyze your data. So five minutes a day, is better than an hour every week, right? We wanna shorten that feedback cycle. Taking five minutes a day to reflect on what you're tracking, how the life hack is working for you, is better than looking at it every two weeks, looking at it at the end of the month and saying, wow, did that work, did that not? You wanna really tighten up that feedback cycle so that you can make interventions if necessary. Keep it going. Well, that's the medium one. The hard challenge for you is I want you to not be afraid to dig into the hard stuff. You know, a lot of times we ask these questions about ourselves of why I'm doing what I'm doing, and the answers aren't always fun. So, you know, when I'm working with patients, it can be hard to address some of the truths about why we're doing what we're doing. You know, I like to tell people 5% of therapy is figuring out what's wrong. 95% is getting the patient to figure it out and to want to do something about it. So over the next 30 days, don't be afraid to ask yourself tough questions. Because, you know, and a lot of people have said this today, sometimes the thing that you're most afraid of is what you really need to do. So if I can impress these things on you as a psychologist, you know, as you start to work over the next month, collect your data. Whatever you're trying to change, collect the data, look at it, reflect on it, and then add in a little dose of self-reflection. And if you're interested in learning more about quantifying self, like James said, we have meetups here in Seattle. We meet pretty regularly. It's, uh, if you go to meetup.com, quantified self, the website quantified self has a lot of tools. Uh, if you're still looking for tools and things, ways to collect data, it's a great resource for finding these things out. And really just, Keep going, keep gathering that data, reflecting on it, and that's what will change a life hack to a life lesson, is that reflection, keeping that iteration cycle going, that feedback cycle going. So I am gonna cut things a little bit short. Any questions about tools, about ways to track things? So this is the basis band, it's the B1. It's the only one. I don't know why they named it the B1. Probably they're going to have more. Um, it's about, I think it's about $200 now. Um, has a mobile app for Android, iOS, website. Uh, it just added in a new sleep capability so you can really get the sleep cycles to know when you're in deep sleep versus light sleep. Uh, all those sorts of things and it's a good, easy, hacky way to track things. I With my job, I tried about all of them, so I could probably comment uh, on several. We even have a Zio, so you know, there's that. If you really want to sleep with a giant box on your head, uh, you probably go to eBay and find them now. Uh, 
And that's a nice one as well. Other questions? Comments, concerns? Yes, Larry. Right, I know there was a uh, web by, uh, so he asked, uh, in case you didn't hear, is anyone trying to collect and evaluate these? Um, right now, everything is still very crowdsourced, people you know, telling anecdotal stories. Um, there was a company called Haptique that was trying to do that with medical apps and things to uh, curate them. Uh, I think that plan has gone south uh, recently, so I don't know of anybody doing it. I know FDA is trying to step in. Uh, but I think we're certainly just on the very cusp of that. Yes? Um, there's a couple of uh, folks that are doing wearable tech that are actually in the process of, of evaluating all the applications of wearable tech and uh, uh, quantifying what they do against each other. Just sure. There you go. Other questions, ideas, comments, concerns? Yes, James. Well, I think, I think in terms of quantified self and in terms of wearable stuff, I think we're, up until this point, it's been what can we do, right? It's been what, you know, let's not, you know, Fitbit's tracking your movement. Well, let's jam more things into there. Let's add a heart rate monitor and this and that and trying to figure out what kinds of things we can measure. But what's coming next is the so what factor. So you can track your steps, so you can track your sleep. Big deal. That, that data is meaningless unless you act on it, unless it informs you. One of the nice things that some companies are trying to do, uh, if you're familiar with the Jawbone Up, one of the really nice things it does is it generates insights for you. So it takes your data and it says, hey, based on your data, you've received 50% less sleep than the average Jawbone user. Wow. So it's starting to compare, it's starting to give you kind of intelligent feedback on what you're doing and I think that's what's coming next is we need to find ways to just like we found ways to take the burden of data collection off of ourselves what's coming next is how can we take the burden of providing insight off of ourselves so it becomes more automatic to help us shorten that feedback to make the data more meaningful right because in the area of big data we've got all this data that we can possibly know what to do with so we need to figure out better ways to crunch that down and analyze it in a way that's meaningful and digestible for our tiny human brains that are designed for the stove feedback cycle, not the cake feedback cycle. So. How do you feel about stuff on your ear? Sorry, the only one I know is Pinchy. Um, so he's asking about heart rate variability, which is a measure of stress. Um, you know, your heart rate, the more, uh, you want your heart rate to be very variable. You want it to be able to react to things quickly. So if it's not reacting very quickly or that heart rate variability is off, it's a sign of stress and, and cardiovascular fitness. Um, so there's a company called M-Wave that makes this nice little credit card sized device you can stick your thumb on and breathe and try to analyze your heart rate variability. And it's nice because it comes with an ear cuff that you can plug in and just have it kind of sitting on your ear all day. Uh, actually, one of the guys at our Quantified Self meetup uh, rigged up uh, that device to his laptop and recorded his heart rate variability throughout the entire workday. Uh, and then would correlate that with his Outlook calendar to see where there were times of stress, right? To see, oh, hey, the meeting I had with my boss about this issue was much more stressful to me than this issue. So I need to focus on that and figure out what to do with that. Um, so that's the only one I know for heart rate variability right now. All right, I think that's it. You guys want a break now? Maybe, so on and so forth? Okay, thank you all.